Hello, and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install SQL Operations Studio using Ubuntu Linux. What I have here is Ubuntu running version 16.04 LTS. And this is actually a virtual machine that has 3 gigabytes of RAM, as well as 4 cores assigned to it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up our Firefox browser, and we're just going to go to the Google search engine and search for SQL Operations Studio. So in here, uh, you'll see a couple of links. The first link takes you to the GitHub page for the SQL Operations Studio itself, where you can find the source code for it if you're interested. And the second link is the documentations page that you can use um, as your guide for installation. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the documentation page and click on the install section. And then here you'll see a couple of uh, different links. Um, the first one takes you to the Windows installation process, the other one to Mac OS, and we're going to use the Linux version. So basically the process is pretty simple. You make sure that you have uh, the most up-to-date version of the packages installed on your machine. Um, initially when I deployed Ubuntu 16.04 and I tried to run it, it had some issues with it. So I just made sure that all of the packages and everything else is up to date on this uh, instance of my virtual machine. And then once you do that, you, all you have to do is you basically download the actual package itself by clicking on this Download SQL Operation Studio Preview for Linux. And I'll go ahead and click Save. This is actually going to put it inside of your Downloads folder. And then this is going to take a couple of minutes, a couple of few seconds. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the terminals, uh, the terminal window in Ubuntu, and we're going to go ahead and copy the file over to the uh, root or the home folder for the account that I'm logged in with. We're going to extract it. We're going to add the actual path um, for the actual application that got extracted, and then we're going to reload our uh, bash rc file we basically it's uh telling uh, it's updating the environment variables at this uh, point um so we can actually just execute it from anywhere else uh, on the system so um by simply just running the sql ops command so the source uh, and then the bash rc just basically reloads your profile file itself so the download completed we're going to go ahead and um, actually open that up real quick so you can see that the tar file is right here. It's inside of a download folder. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and open up the terminal window. And you can just uh, simply type in terminal and then open that up. And then here, uh, let's go ahead and actually run the commands. So uh, we can actually copy and paste them pretty quickly. So uh, since we open up uh, the terminal window, it actually by default goes to your uh, profile, the home page itself, or the home folder. Um, then the cp command takes um, the the file that we want to actually copy. And in this case, um, they actually uh, have the dash version number in case it comes with a version number. But um, we don't have to do that. We can use autocomplete. So just delete that uh, first portion of that file name. And simply hit tab and it will autocomplete for you. And then just add the tilde at the end, which basically will tell it to go ahead and copy from the downloads folder and put it inside of your home folder. Once we do that, if we actually type in ls, you'll see that the file got copied over here now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this tar command. Um, and again, we're not going to use the dash version. We'll just uh, delete that portion and use tab, and it will autocomplete for us, and press enter. This will go ahead and extract that um, file into the folder in this uh, home folder for us. So if we type in ls again, what you'll see is we now have the SQL ops Linux dash x64 folder show up. And then um, all we have to do now is we just uh, run this echo command. Let's make sure we actually copy the whole thing. And uh, what this will actually do, um, let me show you real quick. If I run gedit and that bash rc file, what you'll see is this is that profile uh, file that has a few settings specifically for your profile 
but you'll notice that at the end it finishes with fi. Um, once I actually run this command here, uh, you'll notice that it actually adds another line here. It depends at the end. So let me reopen that up now. And now you can see in, in the bottom it added this export command. Basically what this does is it depends um, to the path, the actual folder location for where we actually extracted our SQL Operation Studio. So once it does that, um, all we have to do is run this source uh, command. And what this is going to basically do is instead of us having to log out or reboot the machine, basically it will reload the profile for us. So now all we can, uh, all we need to do in order to run this SQL operations uh, studio is simply type in SQL ops and then press enter and it will launch it for us. And now we actually have a running instance of uh, SQL operations studio on uh, Ubuntu Linux. Now the, the neat thing about this is the experience that you get on Linux and Windows is pretty much the same. You're able to connect to a SQL server and start actually performing the same operations. This is something that you didn't have in a SQL Management Studio because it's only available on Windows. So now uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and establish a connection to the SQL server. So in my prior video, I showed you how to do this using Windows, but in here I can go ahead and actually use SQL login. And uh, I'll, in this case, I'll use my SA password um, and I'll go ahead and type that in. And then I'll use the same database that I used in the prior video, um, basically it's the testdb and press enter. And this will connect to that database. And as you can see, we have the same table. We have uh, the this, this store procedure as well that we can uh, execute and, and see the results of. So if we go to programmability, let's actually go ahead and try to run this. And I'll just uh, hit run. And you can see that it actually returns all the data just like uh, it did on Windows. So the benefit of doing something like this is that you actually get the same experience. You get the same ability for being able to use this for uh, for doing source control, you can actually save the files. Um, you can trigger the different tasks and operations. So basically, you get the management experience of SQL being the same across multiple platforms. Now, I've also been uh, learning a little bit about SQL Operation Studio. One of the neat things that uh, I discovered in it is the ability for you to be able to uh, actually peek into the definition. So let's uh, actually open up a new uh, query here. And so let's say you're uh, trying to write a query to do a select statement, but uh, you have a bunch of tables and you don't want to spend a lot of time trying to open up the tables view. So all you have to do is just uh, type in select, um, select all from, and let's say we're going to go person. And what you can do is actually hover over this, right click and say peak definition. And this will, uh, this will actually go and take a look at that person table and give you the SQL uh, schema and the definition um, of that given table. So now you know that you can actually uh, do a select against first name, last name, or birth date. Um, and then if you had other columns, you could actually do that there as well. So you can go ahead and close that. And if I run this now, it will give me the same results as the store procedure did. But um, another thing that uh, that I discovered that you can do in here is you can use snippets, but they actually provided some out-of-the-box snippets. So if you actually type in SQL, you'll see that some of the snippets uh, that they already provided out-of-the-box are for things like being able to add columns, uh, create databases, store procedures, tables, and do um, also drop operations as well as uh, list operations. The nice thing about this is that, um, you know, you don't have to try to create uh, the template yourself um, or have to know too much from the start when you deploy the application. So, for example, if I wanted to add a column, all I have to do is just uh, actually select that particular uh, template here and start giving it a name, of uh, tell it which table I want it to be in and which uh, schema I want to apply to that and simply run it and it will actually create that column for me. So let's do that real quick. So let's say I wanted to add a uh, created uh, date and I'm going to put it in a table 
person and the schema is going to be dbl and uh, now all i have to do is uh, let me just show you as an example here so you see the column doesn't exist and if i run this now the command actually executes it successfully and let's go ahead and right click to refresh and you can see that the created date uh, showed up now let me go ahead and actually run the code select statement and you can see that the created date column shows up as well. It's not populated, uh, but that's because uh, we didn't put any data or default values into it. Now let's go back here and actually try to remove it. So it's pretty much as simple as SQL and then remove, um, or I should say drop column. And in here, I'll just type in the created date, table person, schema DBO. And then when I run this, it uh, ran successfully. And let's go ahead and uh, rerun this again. And you can see that the column got dropped. So uh, those are some of the things that I'm beginning to learn about this tool. Uh, and as Microsoft actually keeps adding new functionality, we'll be able to actually see uh, more and more use, especially in a cross-platform scenario. So hopefully this was useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. And I will talk to you next time.